All right, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about heat and temperature. Before we really can talk about heat and temperature, though, we have to talk about matter. As you read in Chapter 3, matter is anything that has mass and volume. And you also read about three types of matter. Your book ignores the fourth type of matter, which is plasma. We know about solids, liquids, and gases, and you've learned that before. But let's take a look. I'm going to zoom this in real quick for you. Let's look at these four states of matter. Solids are molecules that uh, are arranged in a regular repeating pattern. They are held firmly in place and they vibrate in place. Solids have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Liquids have molecules that have a little bit extra space in between. They're not as uh, compact and they're definitely not in a repeating regular pattern like solids. Liquids have a definite volume, but they do not have a definite shape. Instead, they take the shape of their container. Gases have lots of empty space in between them, and they fly in all different directions and different speeds. Plasma is the fourth and final type of matter that we will be discussing. There is one more if you want to Google it. Um, but plasma is a high temperature gas and at that temperature, electrons are both positive and negatively charged. The properties of plasma are so much different than the properties of a normal gas that it is considered its own state of matter. As you read chapter 3, you also learned that matter changes in two different ways. Matter can change physically or chemically. Physical changes are changes that occur when a substance does not change chemically. That means no new substances are formed. Any physical state change, melting, freezing, con condensing, vaporizing, evaporating, um, boiling, those are all physical changes, even subliming. Uh, other verbs that would indicate a physical change would be grinding, crushing, anything that indicates to you that the substance is changing in size or physical state, but it's still the exact same substance. Take water, for instance. Solid water is ice. If you let it melt, it's still liquid water. If you let it boil, it's become steam, which is gaseous water or water vapor. Uh, chemical changes, on the other hand, are changes in matter that result in something new being formed. We call this a chemical reaction. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's try that. A chemical reaction. This is important. Uh, some verbs while you're reading that would indicate a chemical reaction are burning, oxidizing, or you know that as rusting, um, digesting, tarnishing, growth, decay, other things that indicate that some sort of change is occurring. Now there are four evidences of a chemical reaction that you need to know, and this is not in your book, so please make sure that you get this down. Um, you can have the production of a gas, the formation of a precipitate, a change in energy, meaning a change in temperature, or light being released, like a glow stick for Halloween. Um, a change in color could also occur. This would be when you add an indicator in a solution. Um, we'll see that more throughout the year. But we use indicators to, to note a change in pH. And if the pH of a substance changes, then definitely some sort of a chemical reaction has occurred. If you take a look at the figure here, uh, we've got a physical change of water to ice. So when liquid water becomes solid water, it's still water, so that is a physical change. We also have an example of a chemical change. In here, we can see that we've got hydrogen peroxide. Uh oh, this is locked. Let me get this. So here's hydrogen peroxide, and it decomposes into water and oxygen. If you're wondering when I was ever going to get to heat and temperature, we're almost there, I promise. In order to start talking about temperature, we need to talk about the different kinds of properties that matter has. Physical properties are characteristics that can be determined without chemically changing a substance. Melting point, boiling point, freezing point, density, texture, hardness, 
Oh, and finally, temperature. These are all things that we can measure with a substance or for a substance, and we're not doing anything chemically to that substance. You've all measured density. You measured the mass of your cylinder, and you measured the volume of the cylinder. We did nothing chemically to that cylinder in order to determine density. If you want to determine texture, you can feel something. You did nothing chemically to that substance. Even melting points and boiling points, although you're changing the physical state of the substance when you're observing the melting point and the boiling point, you are not chemically changing the substance. The second type of property we can examine when we're looking at matter are, is a chemical property. Chemical properties are characteristics of a substance that can only be determined through a chemical reaction. So if a substance tests positive for a certain chemical property, you are going to lose the substance. Something new will occur or will be produced. Flammability and oxidation are two examples of a chemical property. If you wanted to see if a piece of paper is flammable and you light it on fire, once it's done burning, you don't have the paper anymore. So chemical properties can only be determined through a chemical reaction. All right, we're finally to the main event, heat versus temperature. What in the world is the difference between heat and temperature? Aren't they the same thing? If something's hot, doesn't it have a high temperature? It doesn't quite work that way in chemistry, guys. Heat is the flow of energy due to a temperature difference. Heat moves from hot things to cold things. It's kind of like uh, osmosis, where something moves from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Heat flows from a hot item to a cold item. It's an energy movement. There are two different kinds of processes that involve heat. They are exothermic and endothermic processes. And both exo and endothermic processes can be either physical or chemical. If you think back to biology, endo and exo are prefixes again. Exo means outer, so here energy is being released. Endo means inward. Energy is being absorbed in an endothermic process. You've heard these terms before in terms of skeletons. Um, crustaceans have exoskeletons and humans have endoskeletons. Let's take a look at the diagram to make sure we understand exothermic processes versus endothermic processes. In the beaker with the red liquid, uh, obviously red is meaning hot, this is an exothermic process. The energy coming from the hot liquid is going out here, outward. You can feel the heat coming out. The glass may get hot. That energy goes outward. When something is cold, it's taking the energy from its surroundings to try to warm up, and you, the glass will feel cold to you. That's heat. Temperature, on the other hand, is simply a measure of kinetic energy in the molecules of a substance. So when you stick a thermometer in a uh, liquid, and you're measuring its temperature, the higher the temperature, the faster the particles in that liquid are moving. That is what temperature is.